Department of the Edison Building. Present at the board tab table is Mr. Michael Munoz, Superintendent of Schools and a non-voting ex-officio member of the board. Also present is Ms. Wendy Edgar, the Assistant Board Clerk. Ms. Edgar, would you please call the roll? Mr. Barlow. Here. Mrs. Becker. Here. Chair Marvin. Here. Mr. Susner. Here. Ms. Seelinger. Here. Mr. Smith. Ms. Workman. Here. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Point zero 0.01, approval of agenda. There is uh, one change. Item 3.01 per professional week has been added to the agenda. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Announcements and communications 3.01 per professional week. Yes, this week is. Uh, Per professional week, and this is an opportunity for us to thank the many individuals that serve that role for our district, uh, both in general ed and in special education, and, and we really appreciate all of their effort, and without them we would now not be able to do the work that we do every day. So this is an opportunity for us to recognize them and thank them for their service, uh, and then we have also posted some information on social media as well, and, and uh, if you looked at the all the uh, all staff email that you received today on the cabinet update, it was also mentioned in there as well. So we want to thank them for their service to the district. High student achievement 5.01 graduate profile discussion. Yes, so if you look up on the TV screen, this is the uh, agenda we have for tonight. Uh, we would like, I'm going to have uh, Heather kind of go through the thought exchange and give you a quick summary of that. It, uh, it's been a few weeks since we've uh, had the individuals from Thought Exchange present the findings, so she's going to go through that with you rather quickly. Uh, and then I will share some information about the work that the um, leadership group, which is uh, lead principals, directors, and supervisors, we spent some time as a large group uh, looking through the results of the exchange and came up with some information. And then the cabinet today uh, took information from the thought exchange, information from the leadership meeting, and came up with draft uh, graduate profiles. So uh, we'll review those, and then we plan into breaking into two small groups, and the groups are listed up there on the screen. Uh, we'll spend about 30 minutes looking at uh, the draft profile. Each group will have about three uh, profile statements to look at, and the, the goal is to look at the information collected from the thought exchange, the leadership uh, work, and then see if we capture all the input that we received from the our stakeholders through thought exchange and through the leadership work, and then we'll come back together again as a large group and uh, discuss all six uh, draft statements that we came up with. So I'm going to turn it over to Heather and have you kind of walk us through the thought exchange. Thank you. So the first thing I want to talk about is just a really brief overview of thought exchange uh, because it was a few weeks ago that they presented information to the board. But earlier this fall, we had a 10-day period in which we um, surveyed or requested thoughts from uh, community members, staff, students, and parents. Um, and during that time, we had more than 1,300 participants. They provided more than 2,000 thoughts, and they starred or rated those thoughts. Um, they provide more, to, more than 34,800 stars to the thoughts. So the first uh, piece that I want to share with you, knowing that, is we asked two questions. The first one was, what knowledge, skills, and experience will our graduates need to be successful in life, learning, and work? And if you look at this document that is in front of you, the colored bar graph, um, this shows that um, there were four top themes that Thought Exchange determined based on the feedback. 
Um, how these themes were determined were based on uh, keywords or key phrases. So common themes for each category subsequently fall and they're on the back. So the most thoughts were given to student skill. And when they, when Thought Exchange designed this with student skill as a theme, the sub-themes that fell within that were thoughts about life skills and financial literacy, communication and public speaking, critical thinking and analysis, reading and writing and problem solving. Same thing for experiential learning, student quality, and student development. So again, Thought Exchange took a look at all of those thoughts, the 2,182 thoughts, took all of the relevant thoughts, and that's where you see this graph and what, on the back side, what those pieces mean. This is what our uh, principals looked at. Superintendent will get to that in a moment. So that's one way of looking at the data that our principals could look at this. I do want to note that this information will be available to the public on a website. Um, we're still uh, finalizing the website because we're answering some of the questions that our community had. So we want to make sure we have all those answers ready before we post live. So this will be a public facing website so people will be able to look at this data as well. Another way to look at it um, and you'll you'll see this in our um, draft, but is this document right here, which is the report that Thought Exchange provided for us. Um, and so this document, what what it shares is the findings from each question. Um, so we asked the two questions. The insight overview doesn't look at thought as much as it looks at the starring pattern. So the really, the more popular answers and what people really agreed with. And so the first um, item, or the first <coughs> characteristic that they pulled out based on starring patterns was communication and public speaking, followed by life skills and financial literacy, then critical thinking and analysis, and then teamwork and interpersonal skills. And in the gray box, what you'll find is their synopsis after reading through thousands of thoughts. Just basically, it just kind of lays it out there in terms of what what the main theme was. The box with the um, star and then the little person in it, that's an actual thought that was provided by somebody that participated in this um, thought exchange. So in looking at that, um, those are the insight overviews for the first question. What, that's what we're focusing on tonight. But the second question are pages six and seven. And those are our top thoughts or questions from our community about what are we currently doing. Um, the, the specific question was, what questions or thoughts do you have about how we are currently preparing our graduates for success? And so there were three key themes there. But you'll see that we've incorporated um, some of these things will be incorporated with our graduate profile. These weren't necessarily to drive the graduate profile work, but rather, here's where we're at right now or where we'd like to see you go. Um, so that's that's really how the thought exchange process worked. Any questions on that piece? So the um, orange star mm -hmm. would is indicative of what? The orange star is indicative of the largest or of the rating. So if somebody provided, for example, the thought that you see um, with homework assessment and grading, um, that means that there were, um, it looks like a small number, 17 people had provided this with stars. Overall, the average was 4.4 stars, meaning some people gave it a five or not. Most popular is what you could look at it as. Any other questions? Okay, so the next document that I'll call to your attention is yeah, hopefully you all have one that looks like this. Okay, so what we did is these were our four top themes. We broke the uh, leadership team, like I said, uh, lead principals, supervisors, directors, and it worked out that we had uh, two tables per one of these themes. And what they were asked to do is look at the information that was in the thought exchange, but even dig deeper and read the all the comments that were, uh, for example, on this this one that Heather shared with you, 
what's in the, kind of the quote, that's one of the thoughts that were stated. They have the ability to go in and read the thoughts that went with each of the categories. So they dug deeper into uh, to help them because there were statements and they said, well, what do they mean by that? And they could go in and read the actual statements that individuals posted to help them get an understanding of what uh, people were talking about. So they did all of that work and came up with we got too many pieces of paper. All of this, okay? So, for example, communication, collaboration, empathy. So that these were the key words or themes that they picked up, digging deeper into all of the input that we got, okay? So then today, we took that information and also looked at the thought exchange and came up with this document. And this is just a draft of suggested graduate profile. There are six um, key areas. Ethical leader, critical thinker, skilled, skilled communicator, effective collaborator, resilient learner, success ready individual, and then the descriptor of those categories was based on all the input that we received from Thought Exchange and the work that the leadership did. So we believe we captured everything in the Thought Exchange and through the leadership work in this document. So what I would like us to do is, let me get my, this group here on the left, which is group A, has one through three, first three of these on this document. The other side has four through six, okay? We're gonna give you about 30 minutes to look at this information, look at the information from the thought exchange, I think, and this document and see, do you think we've captured all of the input that we received from all the individuals that took part in the exchange. Um, I don't think we want to work backwards. You want What's to that? Backwards. You must work backwards from this. Right. Exactly. I don't think tonight, right now, we want to wordsmith things. Did we capture all of the main ideas? Okay. And then we can roll up the sleeves and uh, wordsmith them. But right now, in your group work, did we capture all the important information that was given to us through the thought exchange and through the work with the leadership? Okay. Any questions on that? So some people need to move. Is that why? No. Nope. We have these. Group B is on this side. Some of us will move and sit on the inside. Yeah, we'll sit on the inside. And this group will have that side. Okay. I Make sure somebody is a uh, note taker for your group. Okay. And then, like I said, we will come back together at... Um, 6.15 to discuss what we've found for so far.
talk a little bit about your discussion. We're ready to. Okay, just a second here. Can you go back to our seats? Well, I think we need to stay here. Or do you want to go? Or it doesn't matter. Okay. All right, I think we are ready. Yes. Ethical leader, I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at ours. We kind of yeah, nope. looked at yours. We followed the instructions. Okay. <laughs> ethical, <laughs> ethical leader, um, we had some discussion around this because uh, first we started with the term ethical leader. Um, there was a concern brought up that not all people that graduate are leaders. So we talked a little bit about our definition of what a leader is, and um, that really does determine if that makes sense, if ethical leader makes sense. We talked about changing that word for contributor. To what? Contributor. Um, and here's why. So it says, influences positive change in service to community, understand oneself and others, and demonstrate strong character and accountability. So an ethical contributor could do that. The, the pieces that we talked about that were really great with this, that we're on the same page about service component is really important. Um, we talked about the fact that a strong character and accountability, which is a theme through all the research um, that we received back, is really important. So we appreciated that part of the definition. Um, and also, we were trying to encompass the social emotional aspect without spelling it out. So that's where we derived this definition. Okay. So let me, so I, so I captured what you said. You're okay with everything that's listed under ethical leader but changing ethical leader to contributor. Or another ethical contributor. Ethical, ethical, yeah. ethical contributor, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Anybody, question? Anybody here have any other questions just for that? Good change. I like it. Okay. okay. The second one we covered was critical thinker. Um, we were all on board with the definition applies information and problem solving skills to address evolving real world issues seeks diverse viewpoints to identify and evaluate possible solutions, uses data and logic to make informed and productive decisions. The one, um, we did have a lot of conversation on this one specifically. One thing that we'd like to add to it is um, the word creative. So how do we creative, um, add the word creative into the definition? And we didn't come to a conclusion there, but we know that that's a critical piece to this. Um, we talked about kind of the hows with this one. Um, curriculum and instruction to drive this in an age-appropriate manner was a piece that we talked about. We also talked about, um, we believe it's essential that the school district embraces different points of view in order to be critical thinker, but how do we implement that? So we did talk about the pedagogy um, and how do you teach this to our staff and to our students. So while we agree to this, we want to make sure we add creativity in some fashion, and then we had more discussion on the how. Deep. We did get very oh. deep over here. <laughs> we did not follow directions. Yeah, I noticed. We picked up on that one right away. Yeah. You're, you're, being, you're being creative. <laughs> we do have some suggestions for yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There is one. Any yeah, questions on their number two? Okay. Okay. And then the third one. Um, we nailed it. So, skilled communicator, no, I'm just, skilled communicator, we didn't have any changes. Um, we felt this definition really reflected code switching, which is what we had talked about in reviewing all of the information from our community and our parents and students. So we didn't have any suggestions with this particular um, profile. Any questions on their third one? Okay. Well, I will uh, summarize ours really quickly. We we were okay with everything on ours. <laughs> no wonder it was so quiet. No but we uh, actually had some conversation about um, we think we've gotten there when all of this information is taught in every classroom across the system at every grade level. Age appropriate, of course. For example, if I'm teaching math, Johnny, you have some coins, make 55 cents, okay? 
two quarters and a nickel. Susie, five dimes and five pennies. At a very young age, that is hitting critical thinker, a, a lot of those skills. So, we'll, yeah, yeah. So we really think that our goal would be that because we had a conversation while well, there are certain content areas that uh, can do this better or should do it, and we said no, really, this should be across all the content areas and. Um, Something I did share with the group that you probably didn't hear is once we land on this profile, then we'll establish goals and measurements for those goals. There was a question, well, how are you going to measure some of the, these things? We're not measuring the graduate profile and the descriptors of the graduate profile. We're going to measure the goals that uh, we establish. However, I, what I envision happening is once that work is done, I will spend time working with uh, a group of teachers, probably may take a full year, that they are going to create a teacher profile. What characteristics and skills do they have to have to help our kids accomplish these things? Okay. Once that's done, we'll work with a group of administrators to create a leader profile. As a leader, what do you have to do in order to help teachers achieve their profile? So, but that's probably so be certain. Certain, you out the role is there'll be certain emphasis placed right. on that role. Right, but that's probably work that will probably the teacher and leader profile will have to be start this year, but probably won't be completed until the next school year. But I think we can still do the goals and measurements without having those in place. But we'll be working on those. Um, what am I missing? Sure. That we we did talk about the um, in the backup material the failure mindset versus the growth mindset and mm -hmm. use of that term. Um, it was a discussion item. I don't know. Yeah. Um, growth it's mindset really obviously is kind of the buzzword of the district. Failure mindset. I said I felt it was um, to me. It meant that was teaching kids that it was okay to fail, that that's part of the process. Um, that's what happens in science all the time. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, anything else, team? I, I have one question. Okay. So when we're talking about how, at some point, what kinds of things you'd like our, our teachers to be able to do, how do we tie that in with where they get their teacher training? Because will they... You know, is this something that's going to be kind of intrinsic or natural to them, or is this going to be stuff that needs to be taught at the university level before they become teachers? I mean, I'm, I'm looking far out. Yeah, I guess I, I haven't uh, thought about that far out. I thought about what are we as a system mm -hmm. are going to have to do to help teachers accomplish the, that profile. Um, about like um, helping kids become critical thinkers. That's part of the class tool observation that we do when we go into classrooms. So out of instructional coaches and building principals, um, give feedback and provide support so that we become better at analysis and inquiry and those kinds of things in the classroom. So it could be we have a really solid teacher, but we are providing more professional development to develop that particular skill support this. And there yeah. may be things that come up through that profile that we want to embed in the class tool. Right. right. To be sure yeah. that if that's what we're that's what we're asking yeah. or that's what we yeah. and our teachers But I think in answer skills. to Julie's question, I think we can have conversation with places like Winona State mm -hmm. University. They produce a lot. I mean, we get a lot of teachers from that institution. So I think we can try to partner with them to influence how they prepare teachers and probably where we'd have a, a better opportunity to do that would be in the graduate induction program where they're in our building going through some training and we can just try to have some of that implemented in, in the curriculum that they use to for that program for teachers that are getting their masters. And then we're in conversation with a couple other uh, institutions that want to partner with us to do something similar so that would be another group that provides education to uh, our teachers too but it, we, I mean we can't force them to do that but we can request to partner with them to uh, to do that 
Mike Beck, I was just sharing with this group back, I think it was in the 90s, maybe it was in the 80s, we had, it was about a three-year critical and creative thinking staff development thing, and we had curriculum with the staff development, we had big groups, working small groups, um, so we have all kinds of resources about how you can help teachers learn to help their kids become more critical and creative in their thinking, and it's mm -hmm. fun, that's the thing, but what it basically boils down to is how are you asking questions? Yes, and that's, and that, not, that's a big not, part of the class. Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's part of the class tool. Yeah. To get yeah. across, and you can do that in your subject subject area. So, right. I mean, the good news is it's cheap, it's easy, it's fun. Um, and so, I think our staff can get that pretty quick. And I think we've got hundreds, thousands, probably, of good examples that are already happening in mm -hmm. the classrooms mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Also. These are, this is really good. Well, no, I, was, I, mean, I, really I was very happy with our work today. Man. No, I, no, I don't think it's a but I mean, it's really good. Wow. You've got I don't like that. Perfect example of collaboration. Yes, it was. So, next question. So, it sounds like we need to have a, a little bit of conversation about your uh, couple the recommendation for changes, but then this is a based on all the feedback, but as a board member, is there something that you believe our graduates need to have that isn't covered, that needs to be added, doesn't, it wasn't part of the thought exchange or anything like that, but something that you believe should be in there somewhere? I have a question. So are you thinking like, uh, I mean, we've talked about technology a lot. So in terms of, of student skills in using data and analyzing it, would you say, I mean, does that need to be a specific part of this? Or do you think that that is included just in the overall um, description that we've, we've seen here that there's a place for that? Yeah, because what what we talked about, that, that example, and then also the life skills one, you know, because it was mentioned in the feedback, uh, financial literacy, but we thought, well, that's a life skill, but then do you list that? Do you list all the other life skills that our kids need? To, I mean, and I think that your example was perfect, that that could be one example to fit under there, but there are others that not just in the area of technology. So we, we thought if we started doing that, then you, these descriptors would just be huge. So oh, and it would be part of the... And it seems to me these details would come in more under the how and the what right. are we mm -hmm. going to do in order right. to make sure that our students do meet these descriptors when they start Right. Yeah, because it might be a how, but you know, something along those lines of uh, cultural awareness. Yeah. Is there something that... Um, It's kind of, I think it's kind of under the resist, resilient, not resistant. <laughs> <laughs> resistant learning. <laughs> the resilient learning. Um, um, but allowing kids or letting kids, students, figure out how to um, change, you know, change directions or um, um, I don't know, um, again, as many of you know, I have <coughs> kids who have, you know, recently graduated from college and kind of you know, moved on into their own lives and um, navigating, um, you know, I, I think I mean, it's just my own kids, but you, know, you kind of go through high school, you go through college, you kind of get on a, a path, and you take this path, and then you know you're out there, kind of like <clears throat> all by yourself, and then you kind of like, well, what do I do now? Kind of, you know. And, um, and one of my children didn't completely understand, and, and maybe this is just life, but didn't really understand that, well, he can make whatever choice 
you know, he he wants at mm -hmm. this point. And you know, if things aren't, you know, so the the so adding to the resilient learner that you know, even if you're working hard and you're persistent to achieve achieve something. I mean, you still have to have flexibility in life. You still need to be flexible. You still need to, you know, because life's going to come and something's going to happen. But you know, that's okay. And so, I mean, is there is there? And I don't know. If you, if you, I don't know how you build that into you know, graduating from high school, but um, but just letting kids know that you know what, have a plan, but. You know, sometimes the plan doesn't work out, and you gotta get a different plan or something. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a, a really good point, and I think you know that's what we want for all of us, for sure. I think it's a really good point. It seems to me that that what you're saying is kind of implanted in a bunch of these: resilient learner and the critical thinker, and the uh, you know people take feedback, they make different choices, they have options. Oh well, yeah, and maybe I, and maybe what I'm thinking is because yes, they they are kind of but maybe just maybe point blank a little bit more that yeah, you have options, you have choices. I think part can, of because learning is lifelong. Part of it is when you, you, know, you get out of high school or college or whatever, and you know it's okay it, 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 to to fail. There is safe. There's really no real consequence to failure in. in the schools in the school settings. I mean, yeah, maybe you get a C or a, instead of a B or an A, or maybe you can get an a, get an F and fail fail class. But when you're in life, and you know, and every day you're now you're confronted making your own personal life decisions, and you make one that ends up not being has a consequence to that decision. Now you're faced alone to face the consequence of that decision, and it's not and it may not necessarily be. You know, failures it takes on a different meaning to you, and all of a sudden, you are really on your own and totally responsible for that consequence. There isn't anybody who's going to, you know, reach in there and save you or pull back and save you. But I think that's what you're trying to describe, and that is yeah. that's just that's life that's life experience. So the, the question is, the question is, will you think or remember something you learned along the way? Say, oh, it's now time for me to apply this particular way of thinking to that. I didn't really think about that that way, you know, but I remember. Somewhere along the path, you know, somebody trying to put that in my head, and maybe you know, somehow, life experience will actually turn them and turn that switch on at that point, which they never did. They never did in high school or, or college, yeah. perhaps. So does this capture that? Mate, I guess I kind of think this might fall under this. Applies information and problem solving skills to address evolving, real world issues. So that, to me, what you're describing could. I mean, it's obviously. Individuals, real world issues. It doesn't have to happen in while you're in school. I mean, it could be five years after you've graduated, and oh my, I got to do something. Hopefully, because we've helped to be a critical thinker and given you the skills to do that, you'll be able to solve that problem you have. And now I got to, hey, I got to do something now. I can't, I don't know. I guess I just. I, I I see where you're coming from, Mike, um, and I I agree. Um, but when I was reading through Critical Thinker, I wasn't when I read real world issues. I was thinking bigger than myself. Oh, right. And and you know, but it is a real <laughs> myself is a real world yeah, issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I. I so for me, I d it defines both. It may be my individual real world issue, or it may be a hunger. The hunger, we, yeah. you know, our society, our country has a hunger. I mean, something that, you know, you, big. Scale. Yeah. It's yeah. A scale. Question of scale. Right. Well, I think on, on some of these student development points on the back of this sheet, too, it talks about responsible and accountable behavior. And empathy and emotional intelligence, and maybe one of the things that we really need to teach kids. Um, leading by example, if nothing else, is how do you form a relationship, you know? How do you build a, com a support community so that you're not all on your own when you are out there, but you can be part of a larger group of people who support and care for each other. So, mm -hmm. I'm asking school district to do that. 
I feel like the changing course part of this might be under resilient learner, mm -hmm. where you're able to weather changes in circumstance or something like that. And a fun reflection. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and it does say engages in reflection and yeah. accepts feedback. That could lead to a course change. We've all, we've all could say a personal example of that probably. Ooh, <laughs> reflecting, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Ooh, I guess I won't do that again. Yeah. Oh, oh if, I, if you just let me wake up, I'll never drink that much again in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I really like how, how, how these things are so well integrated. You know, so it's not a question if you do this one thing here and then do this one thing here, but it's more... It's more like a tapestry, and we're trying to look at the big picture right now. So let's go back to Ann. Based on the two examples we thought were <clears throat> that might fit, are you okay with that, or do you would you like us to call it out more specifically in one of the areas? Um, <clears throat> I guess I would say um, probably do not need to call it out specifically in one of the two areas if when we're actually getting to the implementation piece that it's not that because it's not spelled out in here that we've forgotten about it. Okay. That's all. You know, so um, but yeah, I, I think it's okay, but just I mean, I um, yeah, so just so in the implementation piece. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Any? I'll ask the question again. Is there anything else that, as a board member, you feel needs to be included that you don't think is covered anywhere? No, we, we do that after, remember? <laughs> we do that after we all collectively agree, and then we individually. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't have anything that I think is missing. I'm a, kind of slightly intrigued and sort of thoughtful about um, the inclusion of life skills, and particularly that the specific of the financial literacy. Um, I, I'm just, I, I don't know that I can wrap my head around that as an individual because I sort of feel the tension between schools should do everything and prepare our students, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and the why aren't parents doing their, their job, right, of teaching their children life skills. And so um, I, I, I won't uh, fight that being in there, but I'm just a little, I, I'm not sure how I, I, I feel about um, what exactly we mean because I see only this financial literacy as um, as what I would term a life skill in the uh, materials that we have in front of us. Um, and then the, um, the thought bubble is about um, well, yeah, the one about credit card debt that I was, uh, that was um, so anyway, that was just a, a rumination. Yeah, I would. Uh, 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 there was more mention of budgeting and financing as far as there weren't any, a lot of other specific statements about life skills there. I think there were a couple, I can't remember what the other, there was another one I know for sure, but it may be it mentioned just one or two times. But financial letters or budgeting and things like that came up numerous times under. Life skills category. Did anything come up about how we would like our students to be mentally and physically healthy when they leave us? Yeah, because there was, was, yeah. Yeah, there was, there was, yeah, there was, yeah, uh, there was, under student development, I think that came more from leadership than from the college students. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a big discussion about it. Yeah. Emotional, physical, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I guess to um, to to Deborah, I um, I told my group group probably exactly the same thing that you said. It's like, well, what are parents doing, kind of? And I struggle with the financial piece. However, if you know, if we're true to um, you know finding out what what the people in Rochester want, and if 
a lot of them said, well, one, maybe we don't feel like we're adequately prepared to teach our kids this. I, I don't know why they wouldn't be, but maybe they don't feel like they are, and this is something that they want at least something rudimentary from the school district. Maybe then, you know, we're, you know, we're not the, how many thousands of people answered? You know, a couple thousand, 1,300, or what? How many, how many high school said, kids have check-in accounts? You know, and I mean, it's, you know, so their parents. So maybe, yeah. maybe we, you know, maybe it's it's kind of not really our decision. I mean, if we're really looking at, if we're really trying to take them to account, what what the, what the people want. My, my youngest son graduated in 2009, and he took a class, I believe it was titled Money and You, mm -hmm. at the time. And that was one of the most practical classes he's had. I mean, it was just really nitty-gritty. Mm -hmm. How do you do this? How do you do that? I mean, there was a certain amount of economics in it and budgeting and just really, really practical stuff. It was an elective. I mean, it was something that he I mean, chose. Yeah, there, I mean, there is the elective in there right now about the parents, and it's like, yeah, I really encourage my children to take it, but they decide. But, but we're here from the community, I think, that no, we should encourage them to take it. We should mandate oh, yeah. that they take it. Well, well that's, and, we, that's what that's basically saying. And I'm, and I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm, you know, and again, I'm just, I'm, I struggle with it, but again, if we're really trying to find out what is it that, you know, the, the people who are looking at the graduates of our school district are thinking, and a, it seems like it was a really big thing that kind of bubbled up. And it's like, well, all right then. That's something, you know, if, yeah. we, would, if yeah. we would gloss over it, and be like, I can, well. I can remember an example going to my son in college and a group of guys, and around, I think they were seniors in college. We were out someplace, we had dinner, and whatever. And then would come to me, I ask people, you know, to do the tip, you know, how much tip? I always buy how much tip should I leave? Can somebody tell me 10%, 10% of, you know, so I gave it, I made it easy, 10% of whatever. And I got answers all over the board, and, there, and, I said, and none of them had the answer. They didn't right. get their cell phones out. And no, they, 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 they didn't, you know. They might not be double the tax, yeah, double the tax. Double, yeah, they, they, would, they would do, they'd give the answer, like I'm thinking, man, we're not teaching, even in college, we're not teaching, most of them didn't even have a checkbook till they got to college or, you What's know. What's a checkbook? Yeah, well, today, yeah, today, but, you know, you know, or, or Carter, you know, and I can remember my son saying when he kept overrunning, he goes, well, it says I have money in there, <laughs> you know, the bank says I have this balance, so I, I assume it was there, as he kept over, you know, overdoing it. He was a slow learner, but he, I tell you, he did figure that out, he did figure it out eventually when he had a bill, and I said, that's your bill, it's not mine, and he, he thought it was time to learn that, learn that lesson, but we, I think it's a good thing, I think. Uh, people do want the kids to go to high school and under, to do kind of basic, kind of a basic thing like you know, do you have the money or no, or don't you? Do you know that for sure? Or if you really want to be a teacher, do you really want to incur one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of student debt? Moving on. Yeah. Um. <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> Just think of all the lives that you difference you're making in. I think because it, I, I, I totally agree with um, with Anne saying that it's, you know that the, the community has, has marked this as something of importance. Um, I think it's interesting that though that it plays a part in question one and question two, and we haven't really discussed the theme, the other themes, which I know we're not just necessarily part of the graduate profile, but we haven't <coughs> discussed the homework assessment grading and the trade vocational learning either. So um, I just want to make sure that while well, everything is represented, that those other thoughts were um, the homework, et cetera, and the trade, et cetera, were also floating. I may be a little pie in the sky right now, but it seems to me that if our community is saying this is how we want our kids, this is what we want our kids to look like when they graduate, um, that it would be okay down the road for the district to say, absolutely, we agree, let's work together to do that. And so maybe there's more involvement with families and with other communities. The cradle to career thing. Maybe there are things here that the community can help us do in raising all of our children together. But I think it's a good reflection of, as, as you said, and what the community wants. But I'm not sure that the district has to say, we guarantee you that we will teach all this stuff in isolation. Come on in and help us. Right. Right. 
like, like from the, the personal finance one, having been a junior achievement volunteer myself, that's kind of what that does is volunteers go into the classrooms and teach some of these basic financial skills. I went to Elton Hills a number of times doing that. Okay. Well, or it's something too that well. All right. So if everyone now is taking finance somewhere, then there's potentially other classes that you know kids aren't going to take. Yeah. And it's like. But it could also be incorporated yeah. into curriculum. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. all, all the students that uh, were, they're required to take economics for graduation, right? Yeah, I, and, you know, and it kind of is a little, I mean, yeah. I hate to go back to my same example. I mean, I've been in elementary classrooms where the kids have uh, laminated coins, and, okay, mm -hmm. well, you bought this, you and it cost this, so how much change do you have? To, I mean, they're, they're doing some of that, uh, but I think it can be incorporated in math courses and other yeah. courses. I don't think we have to just say... Every high school class. kid has to take a finance class before you can, I mean, we could say that, but I think we'd be better off trying to incorporate it in some of the other content areas. Real, because they're real world examples right. at the end of the day. Right. It's probably the number one complaint about math classes. How does this apply to me? Right. So any other comments before I move into the next step? Well, only one comment is, Gary, you got to start tipping more than 10%. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's very good tip. So Those let's go back to your <laughs> recommendation <laughs> to change ethical leader <laughs> to ethical contributor. Yeah. It sounds like everybody likes that idea, so we'll make that change. Okay. And your next, your other recommendation was somehow fit creativity in the critical thinker part. So do you have a suggestion for that? I have a suggestion. Applies information, creative thinking, and problem solving skills to address evolving real world issues. So adding creative thinking after in the first one. Okay. Did everybody catch that or do I need to? We're all right with that? All right, very good. I think that's one of the change, things you recommended, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question for Heather. You said that you figured out what we needed to do over here with our three, so did you have some <laughs> changes you wanted to recommend? No, I believe um, Deborah hit on it. We, the one thing that we talked about was using the word um, failure and accepting failure, and you talked about that under resilient learner, but you, I believe, mentioned it might have been in the success-ready individual, but we just wanted that word incorporated somewhere we thought it fit more with your topic. Okay, which one did you have that one in, Heather? Well, we had jotted it down underneath resilient learner, um, so that it's susceptible to fail, we talked about that productive struggle piece, but I'm not sure, I can't remember where Deborah said they had put it. We had discussed it. We just discussed it in the person. Um, Supporting materials. Mm -hmm. yeah. You stay, stay within the boundaries. They were creative when outside the boundaries. Yes. <laughs> so, do we want to try to incorporate that in their resilient learner? Well, I mean, Since you got into our business, <laughs> did you have a suggestion on how we should incorporate it? about that, I think about years ago when, when we talk about data and failure and difficulty is feedback. Is there a way to include something like that in here? Failure and difficulty in life is also feedback that we learn from. How about we could say engages in reflection and accepts failure and feedback from individuals? So we're, we're I think the community is going to really have a, a have a difficult time understanding. What do you mean accepting failure? Like I can grant, I don't need to see uh, an A in this I mean, I, I think we have to, don't we have to accept failure. failure? Failure is a is a oh, is something too. that happens along the continuum of learning, but failure is not the end. Right, right. right. Failure is just a new beginning. So, so how about engages in reflection a of, of failure? Opportunity for new beginning. 
Well, I'm sure it's a failure. That's where yeah. you learn the most. Right. Oh, yeah. We're more reflecting on it. So, who okay, did well, this? Yeah, you're wrong with that. That's some product sheet here. Yeah. Okay, so, I, so I'm just saying this is where it appears. Uh, so under student development, resilience and failure mindset. So I don't know if you, whoever of the cabinet or maybe can say those where those bubbled up from, that term. That term uh, came from the thought exchange. From yeah, the thought exchange. Mm -hmm. Got it. I have a suggested additional sentence on resilient learner. What if it says, accepts failure and course changes as opportunities for growth? How about setbacks? As an, indi as an indicator, need a need for change in direction or change. In, you know, failure is an indication of change. You know, right. that you need to change something. Something has to change. But what did you say, Carl? I like that. Uh, accepts productive struggle. Somehow we weave that for productive struggle. Amy, can you read yours again, please? Accepts failure and course changes as opportunities for growth. There's opportunities for life on the So what do you, course changes you said? Meaning, I'm going this direction and now yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, will they? Yeah. So they're going to say Holy courses shit. like I need yeah, to go a different way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so can we think of a different? Setbacks and. So setbacks was used, what did you say? I just said directional, directional changes, productive struggle. Struggles and setbacks? Productive, what did you say? I just was thinking, can we just put productive struggle somewhere in there? Because okay. that, that's like... Yeah, I don't know that everybody knows what that is. Oh, I see. That's, you don't like yeah. the terminology. Education. Yeah, it is. And struggles. It is. <laughs> <laughs> struggles and setbacks. So Maybe just struggles. If this is what we want to see as a result, don't you think that somehow they would have been able to have been taught how you deal with failure and how you learn from it without being specific in, as a specific thing here? Work hard and persist. So when you work hard and you persist, persisting might, to me, Persisting can be overcoming failure or... Maybe it says persist through struggle. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I <laughs> somehow added after persist. There's still some through something. Through the struggle. That's through something that's to that's achieve that's academic. Persist through failure. Or if you just sort of what Amy was saying. I don't know. I don't know. I think we're supposed to that failure is not yeah. the worst thing that can happen to you. Not failing at something is not the worst thing that can happen to you in life. In this, in this country or in this society, in other countries, I feel you might lead to actually have a lot more severe consequences. What about unexpected outcomes? Uh, we've got it over here now. Yeah. I like that. Oh, you got it? Okay, let's hear it. I like unexpected outcomes better than something. You do? Oh, aren't you a glass? No. Well, <laughs> I googled it. Do you want to move over here? Amy? It's communal. <laughs> okay, read read what you have, Amy. No, Jean. Except oh, Jean. Accepts setbacks as opportunities for growth and learning. That's okay. Accepts setbacks. So you take the word failure out. Why can't we just use the word failure? Accepts failure as an opportunity for. Whatever it was you said. As a new opportunity. As a new opportunity. Because it's well, not, I mean. It may not even be as strong as failure, though, yeah. right? It might right. just be I hit a bump in the road. Okay, that's an opportunity, not a, ooh, I stop. Okay, so would you add that sentence to the end? I would, yeah. Okay. Accept setbacks as opportunities for growth, right? And I'm learning. We have two and accepts in there. We gotta change the word. Okay. We have two what? We have two accepts in that, so we gotta change one of those accepts because oh. we say engages in reflection and accepts feedback, and then we're also ex accepts so about just views, 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 setbacks. Yeah. Sure. We're gonna get more two and a half. We all have to learn our job. <laughs> okay. Use setbacks as opportunities for growth and learning. Yep. 
Everybody okay with that? Did you say views or views? Views. 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 Like you see, yeah. Oh, I'm watching it. Okay. Usually, usually, usually. Because we like the, we like this thing. Okay. Last thing. Here. Our thought was that we would, now that we have these finalized, we'd put it out again as a quick thought exchange to say, here's what we came up with, what do you think? <laughs> or do you not want to do that? So what are your thoughts on our thoughts, yeah. of your thoughts? I think we did, uh, I think it would Very be fun. good um, I think that'd be really good. to see if we, asking our stakeholders if we captured what you told us, hopefully we won't get the only, concern, the only concern I have about that is that you could have a whole group of different people that didn't go out the first time. Then, oh, wait a minute, you should go this direction. You I mean, so we have to be ready that there may be some that are off a little bit, but hopefully, I think. Well, we might learn something new. Right? There could be some people won't accept our divergent thinking. Yeah, they could. That's true. Well, uh, maybe will. <laughs> how we ask the questions. Right. right. Not did we, but yeah. what are the strengths of this approach? Right. Yeah. So we'll work with the, we'll work with them to create the questions. But basically, I think I think we even might have told the public that we would put it out there just to kind of let them see it, uh, and then once we get that, we probably should get together again. We don't have, we could probably even do it at a regular meeting. We don't have to do another study session to do that, but we can just quickly give you. Uh, a summary of what the second thought exchange on this came up with and then if there's something there that's really totally different than what we have so far we may have to do a study session just to see if we how we want it how or if we want to incorporate that how about this what if if it uh, is okay and then it just what comes back says hey they're in we're in sync with what they think we do it, I mean, but there, if it's not, that's going to lead to a long discussion, yeah. and that maybe triggers triggers the, the special, you know, yeah. session. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. If they, don't, if they don't agree with us, because we'll spend a lot of time at a regular board meeting on that one yeah. subject if we if yeah. we don't come back and they ratify or can, you yeah, know. Yeah, I think we just need to see what comes back before we Yeah, yeah I think if it's not too far off from what we're at, we can just bring it out to get, for, I, I think the board needs to formally approve these uh, before we move forward. But I think if the second thought exchange is kind of like way out there a little bit, then we'll have to do a study session to review that. But if it's fairly close and just a little tweak here and there, I think we can just bring that to you at a regular meeting and say, here's an update. Here's an update. Can you approve it so we can move on? Okay. It? Yep. I thank you. Good discussion. I personally want to thank the cabinet. You guys worked very hard this afternoon to, to look at all this information and come forward with uh, six areas, I guess you can call it. So thank you for that. And Chair, if you want to put. Jared at 703.